What is up? I am working on this piece of junk right here. Oh, it's not really a piece of junk. It's got pretty low miles, but it's giving me a lot of trouble. I've been trying to get it to pass inspection for the last couple of months, and uh, it's got something wrong with the monitors not resetting and not not uh, ready for the inspection. So I've been trying to troubleshoot it here for a while. And I got a new O2 sensor. I replaced the downstream one. Sensor itself doesn't look bad, but I'm gonna replace it. And big problem with this, uh, and one of the biggest reasons why I haven't been so pressed to like get it inspected, and it's been just sitting around, is because the four-wheel drive um, is not working. And the reason for that is this little switch right here. This is a vacuum switch. It's got four lines. One comes, one vacuum line comes from the engine. And it's got the three other ones, and um, this broke off. So you can see what it looks like brand new right there. It's got this metal um, sleeve that it goes into, the plastic part goes into. And what happened is this part rusted away, and this just kind of popped out. And this piece is still in the transfer case, and it's on the top of the transfer case. I can't really get to it. So in order to get to it, I might have to pull the transfer case out or cut a hole in the floor. Um, but I haven't tried very hard yet. I'm going to try to get up in there with a little chisel. I think this bottom piece is still intact, so if I can cut a little groove into it and kind of hammer it, I'm hoping it'll come off, but very unlikely it will. It's worth a shot. But you can see the old one is all seized up. It's supposed to... a little ball. Check valve here is supposed to move it's all seized up so that's why it didn't work that's the reason why I haven't really messed with this truck I kind of lost interest in it but I'm back at it again here I'm gonna replace that O2 sensor and then I'm gonna try to attempt to fix the four-wheel drive but this is probably one of the most troublesome vehicles I've bought I've replaced so many things on it and I wish I just got a Chevy but it does run really good, and I'm hoping that I can uh, get this thing inspected very soon. Well, the new sensor I picked up doesn't look anything like this old one here, so I'm going to have to make another trip to the parts store and return it. Had a feeling that was going to happen. Alright, I got the right one now, so that's good. That's more like it. Get that in there and... Uh, Hopefully I can get these monitors to set. Well, I got that in there. So now I'm going to try to get that um, vacuum switch piece out, which is right on top of that little uh, the ledge right there. Alright, well, I attempted to get that piece out. It's not going to happen. I don't really want to cut a hole in the floor because that would require removing the seats. I'd almost just rather take this transfer case out. So, instead of sitting around grumbling and complaining, I'm getting right to town here and taking this drive shaft off so I can slip it out of there. I already got the dust or the whatever it is, the skid plate thing off that is right on directly under it. And then I got to pop uh, the four bolts off on the front drive shaft companion flange and then uh, I think there's like six bolts that hold the transfer case to the transmission alright guys I got the transfer case out and it's like 12 degrees in here so I'm freezing to death alright guys there it is and there is the broken part of the sensor right there so I'm gonna I try to get a chisel and Got a little nick in there, but that thing is rusted in there really good, so I'm going to spray it down with oil. And there's also a drain vent right there, or not a drain vent, like an air vent thing. i got to get that out too, so I'm going to spray it down with some oil. Just about ready to put this uh, transfer case back in. I really, I didn't film me getting that uh, the old piece out because it was just so cold I didn't feel like getting the camera and stuff. Well, all I did was heat up that old piece of the sensor and chiseled it 
put a little mark in there and spun it around came out and uh, I got the other little elbow piece out and I just kind of siliconed a piece of rubber in there for the vent and uh, yeah, I'm just about ready to put it in there I want to replace the pinion seal because that leaks just better just do that now so got to take that yoke off hopefully it comes off pretty easy I got the pinion seal out of there that was a bit of a pain getting that uh, nut off but the reason I took that off right now is I gotta bring that with me so I can compare it to the new one because I, it seems like I've been getting the wrong size parts lately. The old vacuum lines out and you can see they're in pretty rough condition. Looks like they've been patched before. You can see right there the compression fitting. And uh, yeah, there's just like holes here and there and um, they're just a, a mess. So, got those out. The clamps are actually in decent condition. I'll reuse those. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be replacing all that with this copper line. And I got my flare kit. I'm just going to put a little bubble on the end uh, like this. So that the vacuum, the rubber vacuum uh, elbows can pop on there. And I got my handy little tubing cutter that I got from a flea market at a car show. This thing is real old. And then after that I'm gonna get that thing back up in there. I'm now ready to put this um, vacuum line in. I got the bolts all tightened down and the transfer case. I put one drop of blue Loctite on each one just to keep them from vibrating loose. I also found something when I was under here tightening these bolts. That right there is the uh, O2 sensor, the rear O2 sensor wiring. You can see right there, it's broke. Yep, that might be one of my problems why the monitors aren't setting. So, I'm going to be fixing that, of course, as well. But first, I'll get these vacuum lines back in. Alright, time for an update. I got the lines put in, the elbows put in. The reason I went with the elbows there instead of just going straight is I couldn't find the straight fit uh, rubber fittings at the store, so I could only find the elbow ones. So I just used those, put some nice loom on there, made it look nice, got some clamps. Decided to just get the new clamps. The old ones were pretty thin. And the other side is buttoned up. Got some loom on it and more elbows, but that's all right. Won't really make a difference. All right, I got it all wrapped up. Fixed the O2 sensor wired, and I'm ready to start this thing up. And hopefully, the four-wheel drive works. truck's all back together 
Four wheel drive works beautifully. Shifts nice and smooth. So that's great. Now I just hope I can get it to pass inspection. Gotta drive it a little bit to set the monitors, but I do have HP tuners hooked up. And I'm actually playing around with uh, some things on there, so yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's kind of a long one. But I had to take a small break from this truck. I was getting frustrated, but now, now that I got the four-wheel drive working again, gives me a little more uh, motivation to work on it. So I'm sure you'll see more videos of this truck in the future. But until then, have a good one.